to investigate Doppler effects using carts and tracks, and also the beats. So beats are regular pulsing of the loudness of a sound, which is heard when two sources produce sound of slightly different frequency. So here's the graph of the beat. So these two graphs have um, of slightly different frequency, and when there are the graphs are in phase, it's constructive, hence the sound is loud. However, when they are out of phase, it's destructive and it's soft. So it's gonna be loud, soft, loud, soft, and loud. And from here to here, that will be one beat. So for the formula for beats, you can calculate it by subtracting one frequency from the another. So for example, if you have frequency of 202, and then another of 200, then you will total here a beats of two in one second. The Doppler effect is the change in wave frequency resulting from motion of the source or observer. This is during the pulley's cars moving towards the buoy and the wave are getting compressed. As a result, according to this um, equation, this velocity of the source is, remains constant. So as the wavelength decreases, the frequency will increase and what buoy here will be of more frequency than the frequency that's actually generated by the police car. So this is the equation for calculating frequency generated by Doppler effect. And BD, we're ignoring this because one object is remaining con um, stationary, and this, we're subtracting it from the speed of the w uh, sound wave in the air because it's moving towards the source. We will use the Doppler effect concept to create beats using one moving cart with a frequency generator source and a stationary frequency generator. As the carts move towards the stationary frequency source, we should be able to hear beats and see them on the graph. In our inquiry, we will be investigating at which frequency can we see the beats the best on the vernier logger pro sound pressure graph. Therefore, our independent variable would be the frequency of both the generators and our dependent variable would be the sound pressure graph on the Vernier Logger Pro that shows the beats formed. The variables that will remain constant would be the number of tracks used, which was 2, the speed of the cart, which was approximately 0 0.80 meter per second each time, the app used to generate the frequency of two sources, the type of microphone used, and the position of the microphone and stationary frequency generator source. So these are our setups for our lab and cardio about beats. And so we connected these two tracks together and at the end of these tracks, we have a motion detector, which is connected to this laptop. And um, this will tell us about the velocity of the cart and this cart has a phone attached to it which will generate this frequency and over here we have microphone which is gonna collect the sound pressure and then this is also connected to another laptop which will tell us about the results and over here we have another phone which will generate the same frequency as the frequency that's generated by another phone. In the graph, as the cart moves towards the microphone, its amplitude increases due to the increase in the proximity of the car and the microphone. Also, there is a sudden increase in the sound pressure as there was a bump between the tracks, increasing the sound pressure at that particular moment. You can see that there are approximately three beats in one second. The change in time from here to here is approximately one second, and there are total three beats in this time frame. Therefore, we can conclude that the frequency that resulted from Doppler effect was 1,203. We concluded that the best frequency for investigating beat was 1,200 Hz, assuming that the speed of the cart was 0.8 m per second. The speed was neither 
too fast nor slow, ensuring that the car didn't fall off from the track because the speed was too fast, or a car stopping in the middle because it was too slow. Assuming that the speed of 0.8 meter per second remains constant throughout, the best frequency for investigating beats was 1200 Hz, as the frequency that calculated from the Doppler effect formula was 1203. The frequency of 1200 Hz with 0.8 meter per second as the speed of the car enabled us to see 3 beats per second, which were clearly visible and identifiable in the graph. These are the graphs of 800,000, 1200, and 1400 Hz. As you can see, the graph of 800 Hz and 1000 Hz aren't really clear. It's because there are less beats generated per second, making it hard to be displayed on the graph. You can also see that as the frequency increases, it's getting better and it's more clear for us to see the beats. However, when we reach 1400 Hz, the graphs were considerably squashed, making it a bit hard to clearly identify the bits. As a result, we concluded that 1200 Hz is the best frequency for investigating beats. We faced many difficulties when doing this inquiry. In the beginning, it was extremely hard to make the cart move at the same speed each time. However, we practiced moving the cart and several times and noting down how much force we applied to the cart. Though we did not get exactly 0.8 meter per second each time, our speeds varied from 0.9 to 0.85 meter per second. Another difficulty was that the cart bumped slightly when crossing the two 1 meter tracks and the microphone detected the sound making a big spike in our graphs. So we used a rod to connect the tracks and make them at the same level so the cart could smoothly pass by with a smaller bump than before. By tilting the tracks slightly, we also overcame friction making sure that the cart travels at a constant speed most of the time. Also, it was difficult to get clear beats on the graph for any frequency in a noisy room because the microphone can pick up the other sound sources. So we decided to conduct the investigation in a quiet room. We also moved the position of the microphone and discovered that the beats can be seen the best when the microphone and frequency sound generator were attached to a clamp and at the end of the tracks. These are a few of the difficulties we faced but were able to overcome in order to get the best possible beats on our graphs. If you are interested and want to do this inquiry in the future, it would be good to think about finding ways to overcome the same problems we did. It would also be good if instead of finding the best frequency, you could find out which speed is the best for a specific frequency and compare to the speed from the Doppler effect formula for that specific frequency.